Greetings, Android users. This is Reverend Kyle, your Minister of Mobile Devices. And uh, I'm sitting here in front of my new computer. Uh, some of you may or may not have known. I have built a new computer specifically for my uh, Android videos and other shenanigans. And uh, I'm sitting here on the uh, new ReverendKyle.com website that has just gone live uh, today. Uh, I encourage you to go check it out. Uh, Rev TV, Android videos, and whatnot. Uh, the forum is alive and well and starting off very nicely. I encourage you to come in here post your questions in here uh, this is where I will be hanging out to answer your questions uh, along with uh, you can also go to the articles and take a look at all of the different uh, things that I have posted over the last couple months and uh, each one of these has uh, a link to the video along with some description and files and whatnot so something for you to look at here uh, but that's not exactly why I'm doing this video this video is intended to show you uh, the Android SDK and uh, ADB, these are two things that I have not installed on my new machine yet, and so you get the pleasure of watching me install it on this new machine. Now, uh, I've gone to developer.android.com forward slash SDK, and that uh, brings me to this page. Uh, on here, you'll notice that there are three different platforms, Windows, Mac OS X, and uh, Linux. And now uh, I, this video is specific for a Windows installation. I have Windows 7 64-bit. Uh, if you have a Mac or a Linux, uh, I encourage you to attempt this on your own. Uh, I may go back and do a Linux one someday, but uh, you will not see me do a Mac OS installation. Anyway, uh, there are two files here for the Windows installation. One is uh, a zip file and the other one is an executable. Uh, even though the executable is recommended, I am recommending that you download this file here, the zip file. And I've already downloaded this file and have placed it on my desktop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click it and it's going to open up with uh, WinRare, which is my compression program of choice, and it gives you one folder. Now the nice thing about this folder is it's kind of all-inclusive. So what I'm going to do is hit Extract To, and I'm going to dump this right on my C drive. Uh, you don't have to put it on your C drive, I just put it there for uh, simplicity and ease of finding it later. So I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to dump these this folder right onto my C drive. So if I go out to my C drive, there it is. And uh, I don't like the name that it's been given because the dashes and whatnot are a little uh, uh, messy. And so I'm going to rename this Android SDK, and this is what I have my other Android SDK folders on my other machines name so from a congruent standpoint everything is named the same now and so I go in here and you'll notice there's a couple files and uh, this is exactly what we want to be at the first file that we're gonna actually take a look at is the SDK manager we're gonna double click this and it's actually gonna pop up and show you all of the different packages that you either have or do not have on your machine. Now, if this is your first time installing the Android SDK, uh, like I uh, am doing here, uh, this is my first time installing it on this machine, uh, nothing is really going to be installed. Uh, I'm going to check off this here, the uh, tools with the SDK tools and platform tools. This is what's going to give you the ADB. This is the important uh, chunk of this. The rest of this is all optional. And I actually am going to turn off, I'm not going to install the API for Ice Cream Sandwich just yet, uh, but I am going to check off uh, the Android 2.3.3, which is the Gingerbread API. Uh, I'm checking that off because in a future video I will need to use this. So if you're following this video because you were linked to it from another video in the future, uh, be sure to check this off. Uh, for those of you who... Um, are installing this for the first time. These are things that you can always run this later and install these other chunks later if you choose to. Uh, it's not something that's uh, necessary. You can always do it later. So with those things checked off, this, this up here that you have to check this off, this is important. Uh, I'm going to go over here to install the packages and check that out. And another box pops up with all of the things we're going to install. And it wants to know whether I want to accept or reject. I'm going to hit accept all and I'm going to hit install. 
and it's going to fly through and start downloading files off of the internet and uh, this might take a little while and uh, other random boxes might pop up and so uh, I'm not going to sit here and ramble while this is installing I'm gonna let it just do its thing and when it's all done I'll come back and show you what we do next up oh, here's one of those boxes I was talking about so this is normal so just leave that be okay if anything like this pops up where it wants you to log into something just cancel it uh, that's not necessary um, it, hopefully that that doesn't pop up uh, it might pop up a couple times on you if it does like I said just cancel them out you don't really need that uh, okay so the login thing popped up a few more times and I've closed it but now it looks like it's all the way done so let me hit close here and uh, I'm going to just uh, close this here as well and now you'll notice that we have quite a bit of uh, more folders here than we used to have. And one of the folders that we have here that we didn't have before is Platform Tools. Now inside Platform Tools, you'll notice is a very magical file called ADB. Uh, ADB stands for Android Debug Bridge. And uh, this is the key to being able to type commands from your, uh, your DOS prompt and having it uh, shoot over into your Android device. So if, for example, you wanted to uh, uh, change some files on your Android device or possibly send commands or do what they call sideloading of uh, apps, uh, ADB is the key to all of that. Uh, one thing that we should do here is we should set our path in Windows to recognize the ADB command from wherever it is we decide to type it. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to hit our start button and right click on computer. Uh, you could also do it by just right clicking on the icon. And so I'm going to go to properties. And from here I'm going to go to advanced system settings. And on the advanced tab here under system properties, we're going to hit environment variables. Now this is uh, something that you would want to do some more research on if you were going to play with all of this stuff. The important part here that we're going to play with is the path. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hit edit. And in this big long string of mess here is all of the paths that uh, Windows will go and look for whenever you type in a command. And you'll notice that each one of these paths are separated by a semicolon. So if you were to type in a uh, ADB and you were in, let's say, the Windows directory, it would actually scan all of these different paths to find out where that ADB command is. So we're going to add a couple extra here. So by putting a semicolon at the end of this, we can type in C colon, and I'll just make it capital because I'm like that, C colon backslash Android SDK backslash platform dash tools. Now this is the location of the ADB file. So you'll notice here I'm in C Android SDK platform tools and there is the ADB file. So if I type in an ADB command from anywhere in uh, in my folders, any of my folders, it will pick up here. Now I've also seen where people have put in tools as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another semicolon and I'm going to put C colon backslash Android SDK backslash tools. Now if you did not name your folder Android SDK, you would want to put whatever it is you named your folder in this spot. So once we're all done with this, we hit OK. We hit OK again and we hit OK again. So now we need to test to see if ADB is actually working. So let's go do that. Now before we go play with the ADB in the command prompt, I do want to point out one thing. Uh, I have taken the liberty of plugging in an Android device to my computer and I'm going to go into my device manager and show you that it has an Android composite ADB interface driver loaded.
Now, depending on the, the build or the manufacture of your Android device, you may have a Motorola or HTC or LG or whatever. Uh, there may be a specific driver that needs to be loaded in order for ADB to talk to your device correctly. If that's the case, I recommend doing some forum searching or possibly just go to that manufacturer's uh, support page and seeing what they have available to you. Now for the case of the device I have plugged in, uh, it uses a generic Android composite ADB interface driver. Now, this driver is provided along with the SDK. So you have a good chance, a good possibility that the driver that comes pre-installed with the SDK will work for your device. You'll know it's done correctly if you see your device as a driver loaded in your device manager. Okay, so now that that's taken care of and we know we have our device plugged in, I'm gonna close a couple windows and I'm actually gonna to go to my start button and type in CMD, which takes me to the good old command prompt. Now, uh, assuming that the paths are in uh, correctly, um, and the uh, ADB is installed as it should be. So if you followed all the directions correctly, if you type in ADB and hit enter, you should get a big list of garbage. Now, more specifically, if you type in ADB and then devices and hit enter, uh, it should attempt to find whatever devices are attached to your machine. Um, in terms of ADB, um, commands. Uh, there are quite a number of them out there. Uh, one of the ones that I use a lot is kill-server and that actually stops the ADB uh, server from running and then if I type in ADB devices again it'll start it back up and this is kind of a way to reboot the ADB. Now as it stands right now it's not seeing my device uh, it's a very good chance that I need to reload my drivers or it's a very good chance that my device is uh, is not uh, playing friendly right now but really the only reason I turned this on in the first place is uh, just to give you a point of reference and um, and that's that's okay. I, I didn't do this to show you how to use ADB. I did this to show you how to install it. So playing around with the drivers and the device itself, we'll get into that uh, in another video as uh, as it becomes necessary. So. Um, at this point, you have this new tool. ADB is something that you see the developers throw out quite a bit. Uh, a lot of times you'll see them talk about uh, side loading or uh, doing some shell types of things or, or maybe even getting a log cat. Uh, with this uh, setup now, you'll have the potential to do those sorts of things. So this kind of takes it to the next level. Uh, for those of you who are very noob to the hacking or uh, are doing things with your device you shouldn't be doing or weren't supposed to be doing, uh, ADB gives you another level of uh, opportunity to play around. So hopefully this is giving you uh, something new to play with. Um, I guess I'll leave it at that. And like I said, there will be uh, other videos talking about ADV. ADB and what you can do with it. Uh, this has been Reverend Kyle, your Minister of Mobile Devices, showing you how to install the Android SDK and ADB onto your computer.